For reaction to this, we speak now to Ben Mpoko, DRC Ambassador to South Africa, is also Dean of the Diplomatic Corps. Very good evening to you, Ambassador. I should assume that you knew about this, that this has been going on for some time. Tell us about your response to what's going on. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, we knew about it, and uh, in my capacity as the Dino Diplomatic Corps, I was uh, fully briefed by DIRCO uh, about uh, this incident. Um, I would like to say, first of all, that most diplomats, when they are assigned to a foreign country, they behave very well. And South Africa is lucky because uh, the diplomats that have been uh, accredited to the Republic of South Africa or some of the best I have seen. Countries send the best diplomat in this country. Uh, but uh, you always have uh, here and there some incidents which might not be appropriate uh, with the position of uh, being a diplomat in the host country. So... Um, well, it seems the, uh, with Lesotho Malawi, they didn't send their di best diplomats to the country. I mean, what went wrong there? It does happen, ma'am, we're human beings. And as a human being, uh, you make mistakes. Uh, you may find a better apple among the best apples. Okay, so it happens everywhere in any society, in any organization. Uh, since I've been in South Africa, this is the first time that I can recall that the government of South Africa has expelled diplomats, giving them 72 hours to leave the country. It's the first time ever. And, uh, but but does know, that South suggest Africa that this hasn't been happening before, or has it just been ignored until now? No, it suggests it has, been, has not been happening before, uh, because uh, those things are very transparent. You cannot be doing this thing and the height. Uh, it's, it's open. And the SARS and other institutions of South Africa, they monitor uh, what's going on with the duty free and so forth. Uh, on a daily basis. It's being monitored, so you cannot really hide it. Uh, okay, so those perpetrators, uh, so, excuse me interrupting, must have known this then. So, so any idea what they were thinking? What's the conversation that's been had with them? What more can you tell us about this? No, I cannot speak for them, but when Dirko approached me as a dean, I brought in other ambassadors to, to think about it, because they briefed us before they took the decision. So what we told them was, if there are people that are breaking the South African law, although we diplomats are protected by the immunities and privileges according to the Vienna Convention 1961, but we are not, we had to bear the host country's laws. So we, our advice was, if there is anybody caught to breaking the law, you have to deal with them directly. You cannot try to uh, punish or give a big name to the entire diplomatic community, just because there might be few individuals not following the rules. So we were briefed, we were uh, totally briefed about that, and that was, what, that was our position. And do you think that this is the right punishment that's been meted out to them? We also heard a little earlier on that this is just the tip of the iceberg. So who's next? I, I don't think so. I think it's being exaggerated. As I said, I interact with my colleagues, uh, and I think most countries, if not all countries, send their best diplomacy to, the, to, to South Africa. And if you see the contribution that the diplomatic committee is making in terms of uh, promoting trade, promoting investment, bringing the investors here, uh, diplomats living in South Africa, they buy homes here, they buy cars, they send their kids to school here. There is a lot the diplomats are contributing. Okay, so I think South Africa is benefiting much more from the presence of diplomats here and then uh, those incidents. But if those incidents occur, of course, the host country, uh, they have the right to deal with that. Okay, uh, but this country has lost millions of rand because of this. Millions. How do we get that back? Well, as I said, it's up to the host country to deal with those embassies or those individuals. We, we cannot all get involved because not all diplomats are involved in this, uh, this issue. So those that are caught, just like uh, you're driving, uh, if a policeman stopped you on the street, you should not stop everybody. They had to stop the people breaking the law. It's, it's the person who breaks the law who had to face the law, uh, not, not, not everybody. And so, should they so go to jail for how, this, do you think? 
No, no, no. A diplomat is protected by the Vienna Convention. You cannot put a diplomat to a jail in a foreign country. Uh, that, that's one of the immunities and privileges. It's just like South African diplomats overseas, they cannot be put into jail even if they, they break the law there. It, mm. it's, it's a reciprocal issue, okay, around the world. And all 183 countries, members of the United Nations, follow those same rules. Mm. I was just wondering what would happen to them when they got back home. But Ben and Poco, very good to talk to you. Thank you. I really appreciate your time this evening. Thank